In this video, we provide the solution to question number 12 from practice exam number two for math 1050, in which case we're given a quadratic equation. In this situation, it's 3x squared plus 2x minus 2, that's equal to 0. And we have to solve this quadratic equation by completing the square. And we have to find all complex solutions. They could be real, they might not be, it doesn't matter. We have to find all of the solutions, even if they're non-real. And the important thing on this one is we must complete the square. The instructions say so. If we try to solve this by factoring, which really won't be helpful on this one, we get no credit. If we use the quadratic formula, even if our answer is correct, the instructions say complete the square. So if we do it some other way, that doesn't count for anything. So we need to make sure we complete the square here. Now, before we start completing the square, we need to make sure this is in the standard quadratic form. The right-hand side should equal zero, and then the left-hand side, we should combine any like terms if that hasn't already been done. So we're in the standard quadratic form, we're ready to go. So what we then need to do is we need to separate basically the constant uh, from the variables there. So I, I said set equals zero, well JK, we're gonna move the two to the other side. So we have a three X squared plus a two X, and this is equal then to two. You'll notice there's a gap here. This is our, uh, we're, we're waiting for our guest of honor. This is his seat that we left open. Um, we wanna go from there. Uh, so then looking at the, we should just have multiples of X on the left-hand side. We have to multiple or factor out the multiple of three from the leading coefficient. So we take out the three, that leaves behind an X squared. Now two is not divisible by three as a whole number, but it is as a fraction. So we still have to factor out that three away and that leaves behind two thirds X. And this is equal to two right here. So now we're in the position where we want to start calculating who is that guest of honor. So who goes in this seat right here? And remember how we do that. We look at the middle coefficient after the leading coefficient's been factor, factored away. And we have to take half of that thing. So one half of two thirds, of course, is equal to two sixths or one third, like so. Then we have to square it. We square this thing and we end up with one ninth. That's the guest of honor that goes in right here. One ninth. But what's good for the goose is good for the gander. If we add one ninth to the left hand side, we have to do that to the right hand side as well. But we really didn't add one ninth, we added three times one ninth, because that three would distribute onto the one ninth as well. So make sure to write the coefficient of three attached to the one ninth as well. Then from there, we get three times. Well, inside the parentheses, you have x squared plus two thirds x plus one ninth, I should have put a plus sign right there. This is now a perfect square trinomial. It'll factor, and it'll factor to be x plus one third. That is half of the two thirds we saw right there, quantity squared. Uh, if this is a plus, this is a plus. Uh, if this was a minus, then this would also be minus. The signs match in that regard. So the left-hand side is now factored. Uh, we get a two plus, well, three times one ninth is one third, like so. And so now we want to then continue to solve the equation, all right? Now that we got x all by itself, we have to peel the onion and remove everything that's attached to the x. So to do that, we're going to divide both sides by 3, like so. Also, since I have to add 1 third with 2, um, I should probably write the 2 as a 6 thirds, like so. So notice on the right-hand side, you get 6 thirds plus a third. That's going to give you 7 thirds. We then divide it by three, which is the same thing as times it by one third. So that gives us a seven ninths right there. So then where are we in the process now? We get X plus a third squared is equal to seven ninths, like so. Uh, we then want to take the square root of both sides to get rid of the square on the left-hand side. But remember, um, squaring is not a one-to-one -one function. So it's inverse uh, actually has two possibilities, the plus or minus there. On the left-hand side, the square and the square root will cancel out, giving us X plus a third. On the right-hand side, we then have this plus or minus the square root of seven over the square root of three, excuse me, the square root of nine, a little ahead of myself there, the square root of nine is three. So we get the square root of seven over three like so. And then to finish up here, we're gonna subtract one third from both sides of the equation. Notice they do have a common denominator of three, which makes things a little bit easier for us. Uh, and so then the final step here is just to record the answer. We're gonna get X equals, we have negative one third plus or minus root seven over three. So we'll just write this as negative one plus or minus the square root of seven over three. If you wanna separate your answers into two pieces, negative one plus root seven over three and negative one minus root seven over three, you can do that, but we wanna keep our answers exact. And because the square root of seven is this irrational number, we really can't simplify it any more than just approximating it. So honestly, if you wanna leave the two answers together with a plus or minus symbol, that's perfectly fine, no issue with that whatsoever. And so we record the answer as 
x is negative 1 plus or minus root 7 over 3. This would be the same answer we got from the, comp the, the quadratic formula, but like I said, as the instructions required, uh, we had to solve this by completing the square.